Hello everyone, my name is Dunnington. Welcome back to another episode of Love at First Sight. Now, I was thinking about doing something a bit different. Uh, well, it won't be much different to you guys that are watching, just a bit different for me. I was going to uh, recording these episodes in a much longer period than I usually do, which I usually do like 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so each session. I was probably planning to make it a bit more of an hour, finishing up at doing an hour session. And after that, I'll go put it in post and then chop the video down so you guys can watch it in its normal 20 minutes version. So I'll probably do it as that. Shouldn't affect you guys anyway, shape or form. But you probably wouldn't hear the intro that made that many amount of times afterwards besides this time. But besides that, let's get into this wild romance. Oh, not wild. Love at first sight. Every heartbeat seems louder than the last. And the panic I thought I had subsided, wells up inside my mind again. I don't think I keep this up. It's been a while since I've been here. A couple weeks, maybe? I still love the game. Mamuro. Right. Right. I have to get going. Uh. Girl looks like she wants to say more. But without another word, I turn and flee down the stairs. I head to the shoe rack, change my shoes, and start rushing home. Oh yeah, that thing. Change the whole shoes. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's some sort of... Uh, ritual or something. Outside shoes for outside, inside shoes for inside, I don't know. Speaking out of my butt. Scenery. I walk on for a few more seconds after clearing the campus gates. Then I pause for a moment and take a deep breath. <gasps> Oxygen! Jeez. It seems that girl didn't follow me or even call after me. Huh. She's probably still sitting at the top of the steps in that desolate stairway. Aww. Go comfort her, dude. Go be a good guy. A cool wind is blowing as I walk home, and I gradually regain my composure. My heart is still racing, though. I think I'm going to feel uneasy about what, I just ha what just happened for a long time. Probably. I was really surprised. Maybe I still don't fully understand what I saw. I'll have to think about it some more. Dude, you just you saw a Mono Eye. One of the best Monster Girls ever. Was it fear? Was I afraid of her? There's nothing to be afraid of. She's super cute. Super kawaii. The Sune. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Very sorry. No. There's nothing scary about some girl. Even if she is. Oh. She is what? What? What are you going to say? Honestly, I can't shake the thought that she might be some kind of monster. But she must be a human high school student, right? Uh, yes and no? I was definitely scared out of my wits at first. But I think if she wanted to hurt me, she would have done it. Oh, I guess that's right. In fact, she's beyond harmless. She's, a, she's as timid as a mouse. Well, that's true. But if that's the case, why do I still feel uneasy? Is my mind just unable to accept that she has only one eye? Dude, come on. A lot of people have one eyes. Some bigger than others. No, that's not it. It's not like I was avoiding staring at her or anything. Actually, I don't think I could have looked away even if I had wanted to. I mean, it was hard to miss. Whatever. It's not worth dwelling on. Are you sure? Because I'd be freaking out myself if I saw a mono eye. Like, I don't think it would be something not worth dwelling on. I think it's a bit more than that. The fact that I'm not disguised... Oh, the fact that I'm not disgusted by her after all this means it was just pure surprise, right? Yeah. I think that's a reasonable conclusion. At any rate, I think it's safe to say anyone who saw her face wouldn't forget it anytime soon. As I'm thinking this over, I finally arrive at the familiar entryway to my house. I was so absorbed in my thoughts, I guess I was on autopilot all the way home. Ooh, mom and dad are home. Mumsy. Oh, crap. Didn't do what I wanted. Ah, oh, there's the button. Oh. Some weird looking shoes, my gosh. What the hell? I'm home. Oh, she. Oh, welcome home, honey. 
You're a little late, aren't you? What were you doing? That's my mom voice. Give me roped. <laughs> I almost read that as raped. Akimi roped me into being her errand boy. She wanted me to deliver something for her. Oh, is that is that all we get to talk about with mom? Okay. Dot 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 Ha! Later that night, I let out a deep sigh as I'm lying in my futon, unable to sleep. That was a sigh? Ha! <sighs> okay. For some reason, I couldn't tell my mom about the one-eyed girl. Why? It wasn't like it was a traumatic event or anything, but I almost feel guilty. Why? Why did you feel guilty? How could you feel guilty? You just saw her. You just, you didn't do anything. In fact, you, was, you were pretty nice. At any rate, I can't stop thinking about her face. I know that if I don't fall asleep soon, I'm going to have to rush to school tomorrow. I, oh, I, I know that feeling, dude. Oh, jeez. Waking up incredibly early just to make it on time? My gosh. College struggles. I try to forget about everything that happened today, but I just can't keep my eyes closed. She looked like she wanted to say something back there, but I panicked and ran away. I kind of regret not staying in now. Yeah, you dummy, you should have stayed. Should have get it on with the mono. Ah, I'm not sure you guys can tell, but I really like Monster Girls. I really like the mono eyes specifically. They're knights. I roll over my futon several times, but eventually I come to a decision. I'm gonna try and find that girl again. Oh, I feel like I should at least learn her name. Press? Okay, I gotta press again. That's so weird. Ooh, achievement! First day! Oh, oh, the eye. Oh, oh! Oh my gosh! Act, Act 2. Have an eye for. The next day, I try to clear my head as I'm walking to school, but I can't stop thinking about that girl. Should I leave class during the break to go look for her? It's going to be difficult to leave without a good excuse though. Maybe when school's over, I'll go to where I met her yesterday and say I just happened by. Yeah, that'll work. But there's no guarantee that she's going to be in the same place today. Besides, I didn't exactly handle that situation gracefully, leaving her like I was trying to run away. Definitely not the best first impression to make. Yeah, probably not, dude. I'll have to think of some excuse for going. Why did I even go to investigate her crying in the first place? I'm not even sure I know myself. That girl. I don't even know her name. What should I call her? Um, um, Ayano. I don't know. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm ready to think of what to call her. Wait, I just realized, why, why do you have to call her something? Just ask her her name, dude. What do you call her? I have to actually find her first. When you find her, you gotta ask her her name. She probably has a name. She's not a pet. I'll ask her her name, introduce myself, and that'll probably be good enough. She'll probably think I'm some kind of freak, but I guess that's fine. <laughs> You're very, very accepting of these things, dude. Maybe if I just talk to her, it'll lighten some of the tension between us. I look up to find I've arrived at school. Looks like I was on autopilot again. I get inside, change my shoes, and head up to the second floor where my classroom is. As I walk upstairs, I see something strange moving out of the corner of my eye. Huh? Oh, it's her! Oh my gosh! Aww. Every time I see her, she just she just brings a smile to my face. I just oh, so beautiful, so nice. Peeking around the corner of the con of the connecting hallway is a head of brown hair. It's a girl I've been seeing in my mind all morning. I seem to be the only one who notices her. Hey, popping around the corner. She must think that pose will keep her totally hidden, as if she's in a manga or something. But she really stands out, at least to me. Oh, she third wall breaking. She's moving her eye around frantically, and sure enough, she picks me out from within the sparse crowd. I'm so surprised to see her. All I can think is, why is the first year a student on the second year floor? Before she hurries up to me. Um, uh, here. She hands me a familiar handkerchief. Does nobody, nobody else sees her? Nobody else sees this? That's right. I had totally forgotten that I lent it to her yesterday. I'm surprised she's not questioning that nobody else is seeing a one-eyed girl. A mono-eye. I take the handkerchief, which she's folded neatly into a perfect square. I think she even washed it. Oh, that's nice of her. 
should probably wash your clothes a bit. Uh, yesterday, I mean, thank you. As soon as she says this in her tiny voice, she runs down the stairs and vanishes around the corner. Hold on, wait! I can't stop myself from calling out, but the morning bell rings, drowning out my voice for me. Oh well, I head to my own classroom. The lunch bell rings. I stash my books in my desk and bolt out of the classroom. I didn't even get to thank that girl for washing my handkerchief. I go to look for her to say what I wanted to earlier. I have a good excuse to talk to her now. I can't let this chance slip away. Yeah, dude, you can't let it slip by. Remember what Eminem said. I arrive at the end of the hallway, but instead of going down to the first year classrooms, I head up the stairs. I don't know for sure, but I think there's a good chance she's going to be up where I met her yesterday. Well, even if she's not, I can just look elsewhere. I get to the third floor and keep going up, all the way to the stairs that led to the roof. Hey. Oh, it's her. Aw. Oh. <gasps> just like yesterday, she's sitting on the same step at the top of the stairs. I see her shoulders jolt when she hears my voice. She looks up at me. Her mouth is opening and closing rapidly. She clearly wants to say something but can't find the words. She's in the same position I was in I was in yesterday, it seems. Thanks for washing my handkerchief. I didn't get a chance to say it earlier. It, yeah. There's a lot of confusion in her soft voice. The fact that she's looking out everywhere but at my face tells me she's not sure what to do. Yeah, you know, my eyes are pretty shy. And pretty self-conscious about their one eye. I'm obviously making her uncomfortable, but I'm not going to run away like I did yesterday. So, this is where you eat your lunch? Huh. You mind if I join you? I say this as gently as possible as I notice the lunchbox she's got perched on her knees. That's a good place to put it, I guess. Yeah, if you're going somewhere during lunchtime, you're probably bringing your lunch as well. While we're talking, I take out my own lunch. Now that you think about it, I don't know if she has any other friends to eat lunch with. Aww! Huh? Uh, no, no. Her answer comes too quickly, and I wonder if she really means it. Her eye starts darting wildly around the corner, corridor in her effort to avoid making eye contact. She begins to look even more nervous. Thanks. I'll just sit down on these steps. Oh, that's me. Thanks. I'll just sit down on these steps. She didn't tell me to go away, at least. I take a seat next to her and unpack my lunch. This seems to start her, and she leans away from me as if she's trying to escape. I sit next to her, but it's not like I'm that close to her. I'm a little offended. While I'm unpacking my lunch, I look her over as casually as I can manage. Oh shit! Up until now, I was fixated on her eye, but the rest of her appearance is pretty striking as well. Oh dang, son! Do I have it open? No, I don't have it open. This is a grade A thumbnail. Just let me let me do this real quick. Shit, no. Okay. I didn't want to do that. Let me just capture this real quick. Oh dang! I, I didn't move the text box. Gosh damn it. Highly unprofessional. Okay, one more time. And. Excelente. Huzzah. All right, that's the thumbnail. Up until now, I was fixating on her eye, but the rest of her appearance is pretty striking as well. Her head is covered in bandages, her hair is messy and unkempt. Her uniform looks like it's been ripped apart and only partially stitched back together. I catch glimpses of the skin on her shoulders and stomach and it looks far from normal. Yeah, she's all bloody and stuff. I notice that she has bruises or Maybe birthmarks, I'm not sure which, all over her legs, her neck, and anywhere else I can see. 
The skin on her dainty limbs look quite look white as a ghost. She doesn't look healthy by any standard. Oh man, is that? Suddenly, our eyes met. I guess I was staring too obviously. <sighs> we quickly break eye contact, but she keeps shooting me side long glances, like she's worried I'll attack her or something. Oh. I'm clutching my chopsticks, but my lunch remains untouched. The long silence is getting uncomfortable. I try to strike up some conversation. Um, come to think of it, I haven't even introduced myself. I'm Fukunaga Mamuro. What's your name? Wait. The thing didn't show up. Okay, I guess that's a, that's a bit of a glitch or a bug. It, it's, it's... Usui Sachi. That was close enough. Sachi, huh? Nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you. Da da da. Da da da. It looks like she's not too talkative, though I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I have to keep the conversation going somehow. Do you always eat lunch up here? Does anyone else ever come up with you or anything? He, yes. I always eat here. No one else comes with me. Does anyone else know you exist? Like, you seem like a big deal. Or the whole one eye. Maybe that was too forward, but the fact that no one else comes up with her isn't too surprising. She's probably always alone. Aww. Such sadness. She shifts her attention onto me, watching me cautiously. Is she that afraid of me touching her? I see. So, what do you do during lunch break then? Read, finish homework, a few other things. Oh, really? What kind of book are you reading? I haven't really read any novels lately. S sorry. Sachi cries out abruptly, her voice rising like she's about to lose her mind. My lunch. Uh, I mean, I'm done, so, uh, excuse me. No sooner does she say this. Then she scoops up her almost untouched lunchbox and runs down the stairs. Aw, oh, man. I can't really chase after her with my lunchbox sitting open on my legs, so she leaves me behind. I've just been run out on, and silence falls over the stairwell. I guess trying to force conversation like that backfired. Sachi only ever replied to my questions with a few words at a time, but she kept looking over at me with her worried eye. Did I really make her that uneasy? Probably. You seem like a very... Very, uh, very dominant male. Yeah, let's go with that. Is it that hard for her to open up to me? This girl seems to lead a very troubled life, and I might not ever be able to get close to her. No, just because I had one unsuc unsuccessful experiment doesn't mean I should give up. Before, I thought that I'd be satisfied if I just spoke to her once, but now I have an overwhelming desire to get to know her. I have to become friends with her now, no matter what. I can't give up. I have to keep trying. Yeah, well, being enthusiastic about it is, is one thing, but there's nothing I can do right now. I might as well eat my food. While I think of a way to meet her again, I finish off what's left of my lunch. Da 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 da. But it's so quiet here now. I thought that no matter where in the school you were during lunchtime, you'd be able to hear students' lively voices. But they barely reach this lonely place. It's like I'm in another world. Maybe you are. Maybe you are in Wizard World, Harry. The voices of the students talking down below are so quiet that the sound of, cho of my chops is clicking against my lunchbox. It's like a hammer on stone. That was a mouthful. Even the sound of my shirt rustling as I move is like the howling of the wind in comparison. How could you eat like this every day? I don't know. People like silence. Da, 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 da. As I close my empty lunchbox, I make up my mind. I absolutely have to become friends with her. Oh yeah, friendship! Returning to my classroom, I catch Tomo and Akami, Akimi just as they're finishing their lunches. Hey, where did you go? The two of us ate our lunches together all alone. Well, you're not all alone since you're both of you together. Come to think of it. Never said anything to them as I left. Oh, my bad. I just finished my lunch too. 